Despite what you may think, New Year's resolutions are not impossible to achieve. Take, for instance, the success story of Lexi and Danny Reed. On January 1st, 2016, they made a goal, they made a New Year's resolution that they would lose weight. Two years later, the couple has lost a combined weight of 406 pounds. Take a look at this before and after picture of the couple. How were they so successful? In this video, I'm gonna give you the five tips and tricks that I have used on my personal weight loss journey to help you succeed in New Year's resolutions. If you wanna check out Lexi or Danny, you can check them out on Instagram. Lexi's at Fat Girl Fed Up, and Danny is at Discovering Danny. So check them out and stay tuned for this video as we go through the five tips to accomplish your New Year's resolutions and a list of New Year's resolutions that I think are important for you. Hey guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. Like I said in the intro, this video is gonna be about the five tips that I believe will help you accomplish your New Year's resolutions this year. But before we begin on the five tips, I wanna talk about five New Year's resolutions that I think would be good for you to do this year, especially if you are a Christian. So for myself personally, my biggest New Year's resolution is to simply read my Bible more. To be honest, my goal is to read the entire Bible in one year. And I tried this last year, I made it about 70 days in, and then I kind of fell off the wagon. So my goal this year is to keep going, to keep pushing forward and to actually read it all in a year. Now, several of the tips I'm gonna give you, I'm actually employing to accomplish this this year. My number one recommendation for you is to read your Bible more. Whether for you that is to read your entire Bible in one year, there are several plans to do that. Maybe it's to read the entire Old Testament in a year or entire New Testament in the year or maybe just to read one book of the Bible a month. Just figure out what your goal looks like and stick to that goal. Second is to pray more. And I guess these two could go either way, however you want to put them, but make it a goal to pray more, whether that's to pray daily, to pray five times a day, to pray every time you go into the office, every time you wake up, right before you go to bed, whatever it looks like to you, make it a goal, a resolution to pray more. Third would be to get closer with family, and this is one for me, that I wanna get closer with my wife, that I wanna, I wanna make goals to get closer with my family. So that may look like you know, going on a date with your spouse uh, once a week. It could look like playing ball with the kids or just playing board games with the kids a couple times a week or doing X, you know, so many times a month. Just make a goal and set a physical, feasible goal that you can actually accomplish and challenge yourself to do that on a regular schedule. So get close with family. It's an extremely important one and one that I feel like a lot of us can, can shy away from thinking it's not as important as you know, losing weight and reading the Bible, but it's it's up there. It's very important to keep your family together is to grow closer with them. Number four, of course, is one of the most popular is to lose weight. And there are several ways to do it. I personally am on a ketogenic diet, so I eat low carb, high fat, and it has worked extremely well for me, but find what works for you. Maybe it's a diet plan, maybe it's an exercise regimen, maybe it's just running every morning. Find what you enjoy and stick to it. And number five, I think is extremely practical and one that a lot of people make, but it's to save money. In America, we are known to live extravagantly in spurts. You know, you know, we get paid on Friday and we live great through the weekend and then Monday we're broke again. So maybe your goal is to save money this year. And there are several ways to accomplish that. I read about someone who set up a direct deposit when they get paid every week, a certain amount goes right into their savings account and they never even know it's there. It's just automatic and before you know it, that accumulates and you've saved up for whatever your goal is. So those are five practical New Year's resolutions. Now I wanna talk about my five tips to help you accomplish those. Number one, it has to matter to you. I feel like I almost don't even need to say that because I feel like it's pretty obvious that whatever you want to accomplish, whatever you wanna spend the next 365 days doing has to matter to you. But surprisingly enough, I have to say it because a lot of us will go out and start goals and start trying to do things that doesn't really matter to us. It's something our spouse wants us to do, something a coworker wants us to do, but it doesn't have a lot of meaning for us. So whatever you're dedicating the next 365 days to has to matter to you. You won't lose weight if it's not important to you. You won't save money if it's not important to you. You won't read the Bible more if it's not important to you. So make sure your resolution matters to you. Not anyone else, it matters to you. Number two, and this one's extremely important to me, but set goals. 
Don't just say, I want to lose weight this year. Say, I want to lose 50 pounds this year. I want to lose 100 pounds this year. I want to be able to run a marathon this year. I want to be able to run a 5K this year. I want to be able to go out and play with the kids this year. Try to give it a numerical value, okay? Try to give your goal a numerical value and maybe a date. And don't just set long-term goals because 100 pounds seems really, really far away. For my number one goal is to read the Bible. And when I pick this Bible up, it is a big book with lots of pages and lots of words, lots of chapters, lots of books, lots of names I can't pronounce. It is a big book. And if I say I have to read this entire book, I immediately get unmotivated. But if I say today I have to read this many pages, I can do that. Break it down into short-term goals. Don't say I have to lose 100 pounds. Say I've got to lose one pound this week. I've got to lose two pounds this week. I've got to run for five minutes this morning. Don't say to yourself, I have to run 26 miles because you're gonna stop. Say, I've got to run one mile today. I've got to run half a mile today. Break it down, set a big goal. That is what you're striving for, but then break it down. Eat that elephant one bite at a time. Don't try to do the whole thing at once. You'll kill yourself, you'll burn out, and you will stop. Break it down one step at a time. Running a marathon's hard. Running half a mile this morning isn't. Well, it would be for me, but for you it might not be, right? Reading the entire Bible is hard. Reading Genesis one through three today is not. And I'm sorry, I kind of jumped into my third, which is take it one day at a time. We have long-term and short-term goals, and then we wanna take those goals one step at a time. Number four is enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. I know running is not always enjoyable. I know dieting is not always enjoyable. I know saving money and not going out and having fun is not always enjoyable. I know, you know, waking up early and reading your Bible or reading your Bible before you go to sleep or replacing that TV show with a little bit of Bible reading isn't always fun. But make it fun. Reward yourself. Say, when I run this mile, I get to play an hour of video games. I get to play 30 minutes of video games. That's my reward. After I read my Bible, after I do my devotion, after I do my prayer time, I do that first thing in the morning. So that is first. I reward myself with some Fallout 4. All right? That is that is my reward. It gives me something to look forward to. So make sure you reward yourself for doing your goal. So after you've ran, maybe then you get to have, you know, that protein shake that you really like. Like any of us actually likes protein shakes. Um, anyway, I can't even have those anymore on a low-carb diet, but you know, figure out what it is that you can reward yourself with and say, after I do this, I get this. And a lot of times that reward is motivation enough for us to fight through whatever it is we don't want to do. And again, take it one day at a time. Make yourself a schedule and take it one day at a time. Do your thing, reward yourself, and I recommend doing it first thing of the morning. And I know I work mornings, I get up early, which is another goal of mine, is to wake up early and read my Bible and have a prayer time. And then yeah, play a little bit of Fallout 4 because that's my reward. And number five, one that I think is extremely important, is get in a group. It's always good to have accountability. And a lot of times that can be your spouse. If your spouse is supportive of your goals, then that is perfect. If your spouse is supportive of you, then that works. If your spouse doesn't really care, doesn't really see the importance, which is okay. That is okay. Then we need to find someone else. For me, I am in a Bible reading group um, with several Christian dads. A lot of us are in the same place in life and we are reading the Bible together and YouVersion now has that feature where at the end you have like a discussion of your thing when you read it in a group and I'm in one of those. And every day we read and we kind of comment back and forth to each other. And I'm in a group. That is my accountability. Now, I recommend everyone to get in a group. If you're trying to get fit, get in a running group. Or just you partner up with some people at church. Partner up with other people that want to get fit. Just find some sort of accountability. Someone that can encourage you and motivate you and tell you, you know, to get off your butt when you're feeling lazy that day. All right, guys. So I hope you now have five resolutions that you should try to achieve. And I also hope these five tips that I've given you today will help you to push forward, to move forward, and accomplish your goals this year. New Year's resolutions are not impossible. They just have to matter. you just got to work. You've got to have a goal. you got to take it one step at a time. And you should find a group. 
All right, guys, I hope that's helped you. If you enjoyed this video, I release content just like this every single week. So go ahead and slap that subscribe button. All right, guys, keep living that bold life.